Hi, and welcome to the Rep Bowman FY 2023 Community Project Funding Frequently Asked Questions video. Thank you for joining us today. What we'll go through today are the general outline of the fiscal year 2023 Community Project Funding process and then answer some of our local entities most frequently asked questions. First, what is Community Project Funding? Community project funding is one part of the federal government's FY 2023 appropriations request process, where members can make requests for funds to go to public or nonprofit entities in their districts to implement specific projects. These funds can be used for a wide range of activities that span from educational programming to violence prevention, senior supports, community development needs, hazard mitigation, and more. An example of a request that the congressman was able to submit and successfully see through the process last year are physical rehabilitation upgrades to a senior center in the district. Another example of a non-capital request is uh, after school programming for a local YMCA in the district. The process for seeking community project funding is to first visit bowman.house.gov slash FY23 dash appropriations dash requests to learn about the types of community project requests New York 16 entities can submit this year. The second thing would be to submit an application to our office by the April 15th deadline. Our office will notify you of next steps by the end of April. Please note that members this year can only submit 15 requests, so our office will unfortunately not be able to move all of the requests forward. If your request is submitted to our office, it will need to be approved by the House Appropriations Committee, included in the FY23 Appropriations Package, and voted on by both the House and the Senate. So even if your request is part of the 15 that our office is able to submit, please know that this is still not a guarantee of funding. Now I'm going to dive into some of the frequently asked questions and in the process and go through together the steps that you would take to actually apply for community project funding to our office by April 15th. So the first question is, is my organization or entity eligible to apply for funding? This is one of our most common questions. And the answer is that if you are a public or nonprofit entity, with a few exceptions, you are eligible to apply for community project funding. If in, in the realm of public entities, any public entity, including local entities like villages and towns, county governments and city governments are eligible to apply for community project funding. If you are a public school seeking funds, we suggest that you contact the school district so that you can determine who is the right level to submit community project funding at. You are always welcome to reach out to our office to discuss further. In the category of nonprofits, if you are a 501c3, you are eligible to apply for community project funding. If you are a 501c4, you are not eligible to apply for community project funding. If you are a 501c6, you are in some cases eligible to apply for community project funding. The Appropriations Committee is reviewing 501c6 cases on a case-by-case -case basis, so we encourage you to reach out to our office so that we can work with you on that eligibility question further. Question two, what types of projects can I apply for? The House Appropriations Committee has set for, forth a, a number of accounts that are eligible for receiving community project funding requests this year. There are over 20 accounts and they range in type and eligibility and potential uses. All of these accounts are listed on the website that I linked to in the beginning of this tutorial. I'm now going to go directly to that website with you all and review what types of projects one can apply for. So as we see here, 
we have the landing page for Rep Bowman's FY23 appropriations requests. Since we are talking specifically about community project funding, you can go right to that part of this page that describes the overall process for community project funding in FY23. What we have outlined here is each of the 10 House Appropriations subcommittees. Within each subcommittee, there is a uh, link to the general information from the committee about those eligible project accounts. And then directly underneath of it, mo most importantly, there's a link to how to apply for any sort of project that would fall within this account. So as you scroll down the page, you'll see descriptions of each eligible account within each subcommittee. If we go over, for example, to the energy and water subcommittee, again, this first link will take you to the house appropriations guidance for this subcommittee. The second link would be the link to Rep Bowman's application portal for any of the subsequent energy and water accounts. And then here you see descriptions of each of the eligible accounts within this uh, subcommittee. So for example, one eligible project that you could apply for is related to Army Corps of Engineer investigations. These fund expenses necessary for the collection and study of basic information about river and harbor, harbor flood control, shore protection, aquatic ecosystem restoration, and related projects. Here you will see if there is a award range, then we would list it here on our website. And if there is a cost share requirement, we would also share that information with you. There are, um, as you keep scrolling down, the Financial Services and General Government Subcommittee for any projects related to uh, national archives or related to small business initiatives. This is the subcommittee that you should be looking towards. For projects related to FEMA or pre-disaster mitigation that would fall under the Homeland Security Subcommittee. For projects related to the environment, including the Environmental Protection Agency and Water Quality, that would fall under the Interior and Environment Subcommittee. For any projects related to labor, like Department of Labor Workforce Development, health, including mental health and healthcare centers, and human services, which includes social services and education related accounts, you will look at the Labor, Health and Human Services Subcommittee. For anything related to Veterans Affairs, specifically uh, related to construction of VA facilities, you would go to the Military Construction slash VA Subcommittee. And last but not least, for any project ideas that you have related to necessary transportation initiatives or related to housing or economic and community development infrastructure or service projects, you would go to the Transportation HUD subcommittee. And to give you a sense of what the actual application looks like, we can go ahead and click here where it pulls up the link to the FY23 Transportation HUD Community Project Funding Request. And again, we really encourage you to read through all of the descriptions of each account, as well as any of the eligibility information up here before you actually begin filling out the application. Question three, what is the funding range? As we just saw, there are many accounts that you can apply for funding through. Within each account, there is a different funding range that you should be aware of. In some cases, the committee has not provided us with a funding range, in which case you can go ahead and submit the request that best matches your needs, and we will work with the committee to determine if that is a viable request. In many cases, though, the committee has provided clear guidance on funding ranges. For example, for projects related to workforce development, education, and social services, um, as well as health, the funding range is $100,000 to $2 million. For projects related to economic development, the suggested uh, average project from last fiscal year was $2 million. That gives you a general sense, but again, we really encourage you to look within the specific account or to reach out to our office if you have further questions. 
Please note that one of the most important things when reviewing applications is making sure that the funding amount that you request matches the scale and scope of the activities that you're saying you will put forth. That's because if you are to receive funding at the at, at as part of this process, you are then, um, you know, required to implement a project that abides by the application that you initially set forth. And so we want to make sure that the funding that you are requesting will be, you know, adequately adequate and also used properly when if we get to the dissemination stage. Question four, are there restrictions on how I can use the funding? There are certain guidelines for how funding should be used. First, projects should make a direct impact on New York 16 constituents. In the vast majority of cases, this means the project will physically occur within New York 16. In some cases, an entity applying might be physically located beyond the boundaries of New York 16, but be offering important services that support uh, a, a, a high number of our constituents, in which case we will definitely review that request. Funds should be expected to be used over a 12-month period. That's because each fiscal year is 12 months. Projects must have strong evidence of community need. These should be projects that are, you know, why uh, people in the community are um, expressing an interest in seeing happen and are excited about um, seeing come through. Projects also within each funding account, there are additional restrictions on the eligible uses of funding. That's why before you begin submitting an application, we highly encourage you to look at the additional restrictions of eligible uses of funds. For example, in some accounts, you are not able to use funding for construction purposes. In other accounts, you are only able to use funding for construction purposes. So it's very important that when you're thinking about what project uh, is you know, most needed in your community that you wanna see happen in fiscal year 2023, you're matching that to the guidelines uh, outlined for each eligible account. Question five, I'm ready to apply. Where can I find the application? So as we went through on our webpage tutorial, we have a link to the application for each subcommittee just beneath the subcommittee header. I will I'll go lead us back to the um, webpage where you can see here, link to Rep Bowman's application portal for transportation, housing, and urban development accounts, for example. Please note that the application link for the different subcommittees are slightly different. So please make sure that you are submitting the application link that matches the subcommittee through which you're applying for. For example, if you are applying for funding for workforce development, you would want to go to the application link for labor, health, and human services. And how would you know that that is the right application link for you? Because just beneath it, you see here, Department of Labor, Employment and Training Administration, Funds for Workforce Development. Question six, do I need letters of support? For each application submission, you will need to provide evidence of strong community support. This can include letters of support, and our office recommends that, that you do go ahead and include at least three letters of support. When thinking about letters of support, it's more important to think about the uh, who is submitting the letter rather than going for quantity. So if you have a project with partners, it is very helpful to show that the partners are engaged and on board through a letter of support. Another very common and productive letter of support is coming from a local elected at a different level of at a non federal level of government. Again, this is a way to you know highlight community need because they can say that they have heard about this from constituents and understand the need of, for the, this project. Another helpful type of letter of support in the case of um, nonprofits is if you are planning to partner with a school district or with a different type of public entity, um, it's helpful to see that as a letter of support. 
And then lastly, you're welcome to submit letters of support from any local businesses, other nonprofit entities, um, or community leaders who you know, can, can speak to the need of this project. There are also other ways to show community support. For example, you can submit newspaper articles or other public media highlighting the need for this type of project. You can also submit public meeting minutes or anything else on the public record showing the need for this project. Please do not submit any sort of private documentation that should not be made public. Or, and there is also no need to submit um, any sort of information from patients in the case of healthcare. Question seven, how detailed does our budget need to be? For each application, you will need to submit a project budget that outlines how you intend to use the funds over your 12 month project period. It is important that you take the time to develop a project budget that gives a clear sense to our office and to the House Appropriations Committee of what types of capital and operating expenses you plan to use, you plan to um, use these funds for. You do not need to provide an ex extremely detailed budget down to the dollar figure. Instead, what we want to see are the main categories of funding that you and, and the way that, that, uh, that the full number is split up within your budget. And what we recommend here is to ensure that any sort of you know, core costs are documented thoroughly in your budget. For example, if you are applying for a planning grant for a capital project, we would definitely want to see which different types of planning activities are you planning to undertake and how is that reflected in your budget. So if in your project narrative you say that you would like to do 30 listening sessions with community stakeholders over the course of the year, we would want to see in the budget an accompanying dollar figure for those sessions. If you have any further questions about the budget or about any eligible activities within your budget, you are welcome to reach out to our office. Question eight, I have a project that does not fit within these guidelines. Can I still apply? We know that the guidelines are, uh, are restrictive and not inclusive of all of the needs of our community. We do not recommend that you apply for community project funding if your project does not fit within these guidelines. We will not be able to move forward any requests that do not fit within the guidelines set forth by the House Appropriations Committee. However, we would love to work with you and any of your colleagues on identifying other sources of federal funds that might be better suited for the project that you have in mind. If this is something that you would like to discuss more, please don't hesitate to reach out to our office. The Congressman has a year round grants team that is here to support you as you work to navigate the federal funding landscape. Question nine, what happens after I submit my request? After you submit a request to our office, the House Appropriations Committee will need to conduct a separate review of every community project funding request and determine whether or not it will include a particular request in the House Appropriations Bill. Once Congressman Bowman has determined the 15 requests that he puts that he will put forward at the end of the April, the House Appropriations Committee will begin this independent review of your project. These appropriations bills must then be approved by the House Appropriations Committee before getting voted on on the House floor. The House of Representatives, including Congressman Bowman, will vote on the appropriations package that includes community project funding that has advanced forward. Then the House of Representatives and the Senate will need to come to an agreement on a final spending package that can pass both chambers. Ultimately, the president signs the final spending package into law, which enacts the community project funding. So all of this is to say, after you submit your request on the 15th, our office will determine if it is able to be one of the 15 requests that the Congressman submits at the end of April. 
after those 15 requests are submitted, they will begin the process of going through the um, House and Senate chambers, and we will keep you posted on any developments that we receive uh, until they are ultimately, hopefully, enacted into law. There is no guarantee of funding, and even if your request is part of the 15, there is still no guarantee of funding until the president signs the final spending package into law, which enacts the community project funding. Last question. Can I speak to someone in Rep Bowman's office about my project idea? The answer is yes, absolutely. We love meeting with local entities during this time of year to discuss any and all community project funding ideas. Please shoot us an email at bowman.appropriations at mail.house.gov to schedule a meeting with our appropriations team. And if there are any questions that we did not answer in this video that, or that you would like to discuss further, again, feel free to email bowman.appropriations at mail.house.gov. We hope that today's tutorial was informative for you um, and we look forward to working with you on this process. Thank you.